Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how to perform some mole mole stoichiometry calculations. So let's jump right in and take a look at an example. In this example problem it says that barium chloride reacts with excess potassium sulfate if 0.695 moles of the product containing chlorine are produced how many moles of potassium sulfate were consumed during the chemical reaction. So we have a chemical reaction right here. However, what we don't see is the chemical reaction equation. And so in this problem, uh, we're given the number of moles of one substance, and we're asked to figure out the number of moles of another substance, if we take a look right here. So before we can even begin this problem here, what we have to do is we have to come up with a correctly written chemical reaction equation. So let's go ahead and read and see what's going on. If we read this question, it tells us that barium chloride is reacting with excess potassium sulfate. So what are the two reactants in this chemical reaction here? Well, it looks like barium chloride is one of the reactants. So we have barium chloride. as one of the reactants and this is going to react with potassium sulfate so we have potassium sulfate as the other reactant here and so if we take a look what are the products going to end up being well we don't know what the products are going to end up being it doesn't tell us so we have to figure that out so in an earlier video, we learned how to write chemical formulas of different compounds. So if we take a look here, barium chloride, what is barium chloride? Well, we know barium has a chemical formula of Ba. And if we take a look at a periodic table of elements, we can see that barium comes from group two on the periodic table of elements. And therefore, it's going to end up losing two electrons when it reacts with other atoms and forms a positive two ion. We know that chloride or chlorine comes from group 17 on the periodic table and those elements there are going to gain one electron when they react with other elements on the periodic table and form negative one ions. So we have barium chloride here and we also learned that when we write a chemical formula and we have an ionic compound where we have a positive ion bonded to a negative ion that these two ionic charges have to add up to zero and we get these to add up to zero by adding subscripts. So we're going to need two chlorides here to cancel out the positive two charge of barium. So our correct chemical formula for barium chloride is BaCl2. And so if we take a look here, barium chloride is going to end up reacting with potassium sulfate. So potassium comes from group one on the periodic table of elements and therefore all those elements there in group one are going to lose one electron when they react and form positive one charged ions. And some people, well, uh, in college you typically won't write this one here, but I'm just writing the one to show you that that element uh, forms a positive one charged ion and ends up losing one electron when it reacts with other elements. So what is sulfate? Well, if you look on a polyatomic ion list or if you uh, memorized your polyatomic ions or your teacher had you memorize them you'll know that sulfate is SO4 with a negative 2 charge so is this the correct chemical formula for potassium sulfate no because these two ionic charges here do not add up to zero this is incorrect we need to add a 2 for a subscript here so that way the ionic charges now add up to zero so let's continue on so what are the products of this chemical reaction going to end up being? Well, if we take a look here, we have a compound here and a compound here. A compound, if you remember, is two or more different uh, elements chemically bonded together. And so we learned in an earlier video on chemical reactions that whenever we have a compound and a compound reacting with one another, like we see right here, uh, that this is going to end up looking like a double replacement reaction. So what's going to end up happening is that barium which has a positive two charge is going to want to bond with sulfate which has a negative two charge if you remember opposite charges attract and so what's going to also end up happening is that this potassium here is going to want to bond with the chloride ion 
And if that happens, what we will end up with is potassium chloride. And now these two ionic charges add up to zero. We don't need to add any subscripts here. And what is our other product going to end up being? If we take a look here, we're going to have barium. And we always write the positive ion first when we're writing a, uh, the formula for an ionic compound. So we have barium, which is Ba, with a positive two charge, and sulfate, SO4, with a negative two charge. And once again, we can see that these two ionic charges add up to zero. Now this doesn't always happen. That just seems to be the case with this example problem where the ionic charges add up to zero. So what is our chemical reaction equation going to end up being? Well, we just figured it out. Our chemical reaction equation is going to end up being BaCl2 plus K2SO4. And this is going to end up producing potassium chloride or KCl plus barium sulfate. So here is our chemical reaction equation. So what we have to do now whenever we perform some stoichiometry is balance our chemical equation. So let's take a look here. We have two potassiums here. So in order to balance a chemical equation, we're going to have to add a coefficient of two here. So now we have two potassiums here, two potassiums here. We have two chlorines on the left. We now have two chlorines on the right. We have one barium on the left, one barium on the right. We have one sulfur on the left, one sulfur on the right. And we have four oxygens on the right and four on the left. So our chemical equation is now balanced. So now we can actually start this stoichiometry problem. And in this problem, if we read here, we have 0 0.695 moles of the product containing chlorine. If you remember, products are found to the right of our little arrow here in a chemical reaction equation. And the product that contains chlorine is this, potassium chloride. So we have 0 0.695 moles of this stuff here. And what we're trying to figure out is if this many moles of potassium chloride are consumed, I'm sorry, are produced in this chemical reaction, then how many moles of potassium sulfate were consumed. So if this many moles of potassium chlorate were produced, then how many moles of potassium sulfate had to be consumed if it reacted with an unlimited or an excess amount of barium chloride? So that's our question. So the starting quantity, if we take a look here, is 0 0.695 moles. We have 0 0.695 moles of potassium chloride and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to figure out the number of moles of potassium sulfate that were consumed so we want to cancel out moles of potassium chloride so we'll put that at the bottom of our fraction here and we're trying to figure out the number of moles of K2SO4 so how do we figure this out? Well, what are the numbers that are going to go in these two empty spaces right here? Well, we have to figure out our mole ratio. Our mole ratio compares two things. It compares the unknown quantity, in that case the K2SO4 here, to the known quantity, in this case here, the KCl. So a mole ratio is going to compare the unknown quantity when we're doing some stoichiometry to the known quantity. And if we take a look, what this relationship is telling us is that for every two moles of potassium chloride that are produced, one mole of potassium sulfate must be consumed. So to get these numbers right here, we simply need to look at the coefficients that come in front of these substances. So if we take a look at KCl, there's a two here. And if we take a look at potassium sulfate, there's an imaginary one there. So understand that concept of a mole ratio. It compares two things in a chemical reaction equation or two substances in a chemical reaction equation. In this case, we're comparing the unknown quantity to the known quantity. So if we take a look now, moles of potassium chloride are going to cancel, leaving us with moles of K2SO4. And so now we just put this in our calculator. We're going to take 0.695. We work our way from left to right. If we come across the number other than 1 in the denominator, we're going to divide. So we're going to take 0 
0 0.695 and we're going to divide this by 2 and what we're going to end up with is 0 0.348 0 0.348 moles of potassium sulfate so in this problem right here if two moles of I'm sorry if we have 0 0.695 moles of potassium chloride that are being produced how many moles of potassium sulfate are being consumed? It looks like 0 0.348 moles of potassium sulfate are going to be consumed. So that's how we're going to do some mole-mole stoichiometry. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.